Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Thursday, March 25th, 2021. We're brought to you by, as always, the great people at Today's Dentistry, Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best at what he does. He is a wonderful dentist. He's been my only dentist the last 27 years. Do you know why? Because he's the best. And when I'm fortunate enough to find the best and hire the best, I cling to the best. I hold the best tight. I utilize the best. You should too. Give him a call. 317-849-2933. Hit subscribe. Hit like. Ring the bell. Do all that stuff. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about Indiana basketball. Not the coaching search right now. Let's talk about the transfer portal. Jordan Geronimo has entered his name or asked Indiana to enter his name into the transfer portal. So he's the fifth on Indiana's current team that is thinking seriously about relocation. Geronimo's mom spoke to the media today and explained the decision, saying it's just a really, it's kind of a long drive. And and he's got a big family, and they like to see him. I don't understand two things about this. Number one, why is mom talking to the media? Why is it important for the mom to have people understand private decisions made by her son and made by the family? I don't get it. Where Jordan Geronimo goes to college should be no more important to us, frankly. And us knowing should be no more important to Jordan Geronimo's mom than the people across the street who've got a kid in college, right? Where that kid's going to college, that's none of my business. I don't have any vested interest in that, right? So why tell me? Hey, why is your kid transferring? Why is your kid not going to Ball State? He's going to wind up going to IUSB. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Great kid. Fine. Enjoy your future. Make the best decision for you. I don't need a mother explaining it to me. It's preposterous why a mother would think that I deserve an explanation as to where Jordan Geronimo's going. I don't know. People have gone crackers. It's not that important. What's important, seriously, is who plays for Indiana, not who plays elsewhere. People want to transfer? Transfer. Go. Please. Enjoy yourself. This is the fifth player to transfer or to enter his name into the transfer portal. It doesn't mean they're necessarily gone. What it does mean is that they can be contacted by other schools if they include their contact information or have the school include their contact information into the transfer portal. So, But Jordan Geronimo sounds like he's wheels up. Um, Armand Franklin does not sound like that necessarily. Race Thompson doesn't sound like that. Jordan Parker, I wouldn't know him if I met him. We've never seen him play. He's never put on an Indiana jersey. Al Durham's played four years at IU. To me, that's, you know what, good go. If you want to utilize a fifth year, that's wonderful. I got no problem with any of that. I assume that a lot of this has to do with not knowing who the coach is going to be. And if you don't know who your coach is going to be, you start to get a little bit nervous. And once that search gets to be about 10 days old, you start to really think seriously about your future at the institution and within that basketball program. And I got no problem with any of these guys entering their name into the transfer portal. You got four years or with this COVID business, you've got a fifth year of eligibility, and it's up to you to figure out how to utilize it to your best advantage. We tend to think as fans, we're like, hey, Jordan Geronimo looks like he can play. We like Armand Franklin. Race Thompson and Armand Franklin are the two guys you could count on to give maximum effort every time they stepped on the floor for Indiana this past year. We don't want those guys to leave. But you know what? It's not our call. It's their call. And if they want to leave, good luck to you. And and I hope I speak for everybody tethered to Indiana University's basketball program even just as fans, and or, or in any other kind of way. Good luck. And, and if you don't play at Indiana again, I, I hope you go someplace where you're going to be made happy, and you can find the combination of that lock that opens the, uh, the basket with all those millions of dollars from the NBA. That's important. But I do have some questions. Right. Number one, why are parents talking? It's just absurd. Number two, why doesn't every player enter the transfer portal? There's no downside to it unless a program decides not to welcome somebody back. And that seems like 
bad practice to me. Number three, why doesn't Indiana have a coach yet? It's been 10 days. What are we doing? Either Scott Dolson is waiting for the right coach to become available, and they've kind of got an agreement in principle, but the timing has got to be right, meaning maybe a team is playing still in the NBA and will be playing at least for the next month and a half, or maybe a team is still playing in the NCAA tournament. I don't know. Maybe a team has an assistant playing in the NCAA tournament. Here's a question that that I want to ask you, and I hope you'll comment about this and share your perspective with me. Why don't college basketball teams hire assistants from the NBA? You look at a guy like Mike Woodson, right? Well, he's been a head coach in the NBA, was successful at it with the Atlanta Hawks, and then again was kind of successful at it with the New York Knicks. Okay, he's been a head coach. The, the Indiana Pacers went out and hired Nate Bjorkren, who had been a head coach, but in the G League, never a head coach in the NBA. They hired him to be a head coach in the NBA. If Nate, Mc, Nate Bjorkren is a great leader and, and made Kevin Pritchard believe that somehow or another he's going to be a terrific leader for the Indiana Pacers, why would a college program like Indiana University or anywhere else not hire Nate Bjorkren to that position at their school? I don't get it. So as we examine the pool of potential candidates that Scott Dolson is vetting for this position, I, I had a great conversation with a guy today named Julian who, who watches and listens every day in the morning and in the afternoon. We kind of ran into each other and he recognized my voice. And so we were talking. He's a black guy and a really smart basketball guy. Played high school basketball, uh, played college basketball, played in the pros in Europe, to my understanding as well. Is an Indiana guy. And what he asks, he got his, I believe he got his PhD at Indiana. What he asks is, because I said we were talking about race as it relates to this Indiana search. Uh, I said, who would you recommend that Dolson hire as a black man into that position? And he said, I don't have a name for you, but how about an assistant coach for an NBA team who has shown himself to be outstanding in kind of that uh, leadership capability and whose skill set would transfer to being the CEO of the Indiana program? I don't have a name like that either, but it's it's an interesting idea that at least has to be sort of vetted, right? And as long as, and he he mentioned this number, but I think it's a little bit higher than this, two-thirds of the players on your roster are going to be black. Should you not seriously consider going out and getting a black coach? As you look at Michigan with Juwan Howard, and you look at the recruiting success that he's had, even though some of those kids are white, right? Do you think that it's not important to those kids that they're able to relate to him? Race is important. It, maybe it shouldn't be important. Maybe it's not a positive in our society that it's important as, as you go out and hire a coach. But you know what? It exists as, as something in the heads of recruits and families, right? That especially in, in this time, where we're, we're, everybody's kind of trying to figure out how they deal with race internally in a way where they're taking a good hard look at themselves in the mirror. Isn't it possibly a good thing for Indiana to have race as a part of the criteria in this search? I know that's going to drive white people crazy, and black people are going to say, hell yes, that it just makes sense, Right? try, if you're white, to think through the lenses of a black man. And if you're black, think through the lenses of a white man, although that seems kind of preposterous in our day and age. But do that and and understand where people are coming from. Because he was asking me, why Brad Stevens? Brad Stevens has not proven himself to be a great coach with the Boston Celtics. Why Dane Fife? Dane Fife is a white guy from Michigan who went to Indiana for four years and is now seen as an Indiana guy 
And all you can say is wonderful stuff about both those guys. How come you're not thinking in terms of the black guys who would be just as qualified for that position? That is a great question. Excellent question. I think I can answer it in my own head to my satisfaction. But that doesn't mean that I'm answering it to the satisfaction of those who, who may choose to play at Indiana or choose not to play at Indiana, including these five transfers. You've got to acknowledge it. It's the elephant in the room, and it's got to be acknowledged. And it's an interesting, interesting question. Let's talk about the trade deadline and the Indiana Pacers. No news for the Colts today. Colts still looking for an edge guy, still need a left tackle, probably need another corner, and there's some out there that they can get in free agency. I think they're going to wind up getting a tight end, whether they need one or not. You could re-sign Burton in all likelihood, but is he going to be able to stay healthy? So do you take a flyer? Not really a flyer, but can you go out and sign Zach Ertz if he winds up being waived by the Philadelphia Eagles? Do you sign him kind of a security blanket for uh, Carson Wentz and a guy who can really be productive? In the five years prior to this past season, I think he averaged 86 catches during those years, and a lot of those balls were thrown by Wentz. Good question. All right, trade deadline. Pacers, quiet. Exactly what I predicted was going to happen because that's kind of what they do, and they think that they have the pieces that they can add in order to be competitive. They think as Karis LeVert continues to evolve as a member of this team, he had 28 last night, had this the step-back three that sort of put the, the game away with 4.7 seconds left. They think LeVert with T.J. Warren as he comes back from the plantar fascia surgery. You know what? You got a chance to be good standing pat and then being good again next year because you got a lot of guys under contract. I don't mind that. I know Aaron Holiday was kind of an interesting name being bandied about because do, do the Pacers really need him? He sat last night. It was a uh, DNP uh, coach's decision last night for Aaron Holiday, so there was speculation that he was going to get moved. He doesn't, so they've got depth at the point guard position. All right, there were a lot of deals made. Uh, Norman Powell is going from the Raptors to the 76ers. Evan Fournier is going to the Celtics. George Hill's going to the 76ers. Nikola uh, Vucevic is going to the Bulls. Otto Porter to the Magic. Here's an interesting note from Spotrac about Otto Porter. He has now earned $124 million in eight years in the NBA. That is more than all but 10 active NFL players have earned. So you want to know why a lot of guys want to play in the NBA? There you go. Otto Porter would be the 11th highest paid NFL player on anybody's roster in terms of career earnings right now. That's unbelievable. Uh, Houston's going to trade Vic to Miami. Rondo is going to the Clippers. Gary Harris from Hamilton Southeastern and Fishers, Indiana. He's going to the Orlando Magic. Aaron Gordon is going to the Nuggets. Uh, the Magic, they're tearing it down to the studs. They're doing in the East what OKC has done in the West. Mo Wagner is going to the Bulls. The Bulls, their number ones in 21 and 23 are going to the Magic. So there you go. Lots going on, as always. And we got to the bottom of all of it, and we do it every single day in 15 minutes. And I want to hear from you as far as what you think about the role race maybe should play in the uh, Indiana University basketball hire. Because I don't consider it. I consider myself a little bit post-racial. I just don't see it. But I don't think that that's a realistic kind of societal philosophy. And so I'd be interested in hearing what you think. All right. Uh, but five guys in the transfer portal, uh, you got to hire a coach or you're going to have more of this, and you're going to have people leaving. And I don't think you can go through a rebuild like Indiana had back in 2008. I just don't think that this fan base can sustain hope long enough to have that bear fruit. So get the right guy, but get the right guy. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Breakfast with Kent, bright and early, 7 o'clock on Facebook Live, and immediately thereafter on YouTube. Subscribe. Why wouldn't you, for God's sake?